What is up guys, Roger here with Vantage Home Loans. Today we're gonna to talk about, is there a housing crash coming? And are prices gonna go up, down? What are they gonna do? And the way we're gonna look at that is the number one law of economics, which is supply and demand. We all know the last couple of years there's been really strong demand, very low supply, that's driven prices like crazy. And we know that demand has come down because rates have gone up so much. So let's look at the numbers, see what supply and demand looks like, and kind of use that to project what we can expect to happen in the next uh, in the next six to 12 months. Okay, so. So the first thing we're gonna look at is housing demand. And the way we look at that is housing formations. So what is a housing formation? Uh, housing formation is a person or a couple that move out of mom and dad's house and they start their own, you know, they turn on the electric electricity at the new property um, and create a new household, okay? That can also happen if there is a couple that's split up or divorce, whatever the case, and one of them branches off and starts a new household. Now, what is not included in a household formation are people moving. So for example, if you have, if you sell a home, you have to occupy another home. So that's a net neutral, and that does not count as a household formation. It's basically kids leaving their mom and dad's house or a couple splitting up, creating a new household. So right now, household formations are at 1.417 million. So about 1.4 million, we see, we saw a little spike here and then a dip because of COVID. Um, so that's around, that's basically where we're at right now. The average is a little less than this number, maybe around 1.3, 1.2, uh, 1 to 1.2, I would say, but right now we're at 1.4. So the housing demand or the housing formations are fairly high compared to the average. So now let's look at new housing supply. Okay, so how do we look at housing supply? Well, a lot of people look at housing starts, right? So that's about 1.7 million housing starts in the US today. Annually, 1 million home or 100,000 homes are destroyed. So that leaves us with a total new supply of 1.6 million homes. And you might be thinking, okay, well, there's 1.4 million household formations and there's 1.6 million total new supply. Well, that includes what new housing starts means is there's been a shovel put into the ground. So they've started construction and guess what? You cannot move in there yet. So what we need to look at is housing finishes. So we have 1.4 million housing formations. It looks like we have a surplus, right? But actually housing completions are at 1.3 million minus the 100,000 that are destroyed. That leaves us with a new supply of 1.2 million new homes that are available, 1.4 million household formations. That means we're in the negative by 200,000 homes. We're 200,000 homes short of where we need to be to be even. Okay. And that's even considering the new households being formed, even with rates going up and all of that included. Okay. So now let's look at inventory. Let's look at the uh, supply side of the equation. So as you can see right now, inventory is just, just over a million and you could see that it's going up. Okay. And as you could see in the past, Every year, there's an increase in housing inventory. There's an increase in supply. And the reason for that is, you remember when you were young and you went to school, and in the middle of the school year, you have a new kid that comes to your class, right? For that new kid, it's probably hard to assimilate into the class because the clicks are already made, friends have already been formed, and it's kind of hard for that kid to break into the clicks and make friends, okay? It's a lot easier for that kid to make friends if he comes, um, if he starts school, the school year, um, at that new school, okay? And the reason this happens is because parents who 
if they want their kid to start school at the beginning of the year, which is end of summer, they're going to have to sell their home in the springtime in order to buy the new home in summer so that their kid can start the school at the beginning of the school year and have a good year in school and not have to come in in the middle of the year. And that is why every single year you see inventory go up during this time. But as you can also see, the highs are a little bit lower every year. So when this comes back down, this is projected to come back down to under a million. Okay, so that's what we see with this chart with the inventory. Now, the real story with home inventory. So right now, yes, there are a little over a million homes for sale, but that also includes 600,000 homes that are under contract, okay? So when they say existing home inventory, they're including pending sales, right? Houses that are in escrow that are about to close. So the actual inventory of homes available today is only 400,000. So you got 1.4 million households, only 400,000 homes active on the market that you can purchase today. And the U.S. population of being 300 something million, 330 million, we only have 400,000 active homes for sale. Okay, so now let's look at the existing home listings in the U.S. over the past five years. Now we could see back in 2016, there were 1.5 million active listings, active homes for sale. That was 75% of the market. So there was 2 million homes in inventory, 25% were in escrow, and 1.5 million were available. So today, as you could see, there's only 40% and a little over 400,000 homes available, over a million home difference from back in 2016 and our all-time low, we just came back from an all-time low of existing home listings, and we're just 33,000 above that number. So as you could see, home uh, listings, active listings are down, In new formations are still high, so this is why we don't think home prices and home values are gonna come down. So people expecting a crash you know, they're waiting on this. If you're able to buy a property and you're waiting because you think there's going to be a crash, we don't think that's going to happen. And we think that's a good thing. We think that's healthy. We want slow, steady appreciation. What's happened over the last couple of years was not normal, and we don't want that to continue. You know, 20% home value increases. That's not normal and, again, not healthy, and we don't want that for the long term. Another thing to keep in mind is, yes, there are different pockets, cities, counties that are going to have their own fluctuations in home prices. Some counties or some cities or pockets may have been overinflated and they might come down. This is just looking at a national average. OK, so that's also something to consider. There are little pockets. Do your own research as far as what cities, counties um, home what's going on in home prices but as you could see on a national scale um, inventory is very very low now another thing that you might see you might it might pre be perceived like oh there's a lot more listings like we just talked about well and then there's a lot of price drops well yes there are people who are still stuck in you know six months ago a year ago and they think they're gonna get 25 offers and they might price their high price their home very high and they might be reducing their price because now they have an unrealistic expectation of how much they're going to let how much they're going to get for their home so they keep dropping their price so that's something that may be happening yes that is true um but again those are just people who are, haven't priced their home right and you know they think it is still 2021 okay so one other thing quickly want to look at is um, zillow updated their forecast this just came out a few days ago and basically what they've done, they've adjusted their forecast. So they've reduced it and they think home values are going to go up 7.8% from now until June of next year. It was previously um, at 9.7%. Now they think it's going to be 7.8%. Um, last year was like 20%. So again, even Zillow can see with even with interest rates going up, they still see home values going up 8%. I think it's probably going to be 
something closer to the 5%, but we'll take 8% way better than the 20%. So if we just look at the very, very simple supply and demand economics, we can see that there is not, there isn't going to be a crash coming, a 20, 30% correction that a lot of people think is coming. Um, so that's our two cents. A lot of people still think that there is going to be a crash. And especially if we continue into this recession, um, the Fed's going to lower rates. And what's what's that going to do with rates coming down? Competition is going to go up. Home prices are going to go up. So that's just my two cents. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think home prices are coming down? What do you guys think? Leave a comment below and um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.